Do you have a preferred genre, era, or conduct, or, uh, composer that who whose music you like to uh, conduct? Um, genre, composer, era. Um, well, I must say that um, generally I love all the music, the music, and it's very hard for me to give this answer because I mean, um, when Bach is such a great composer. Mozart is a great composer, Beethoven, Mahler, I love Mahler so much, I would never miss it, Bruckner, I would never miss it, and even Johann Strauss, and you will hear next season um, um, a subscription concert with Johann Strauss pieces, probably some of them you will, uh, you never heard, it's just amazing, and I must tell you, this music is, sounds so light as Mozart, but Johann Strauss is the polkas and waltzes. It's incredibly difficult to play. You cannot do this in half of a rehearsal. It sounds like, oh, it's light music. It goes quick. They probably never rehearsed it. <laughs> but if you do it in the right stylistic way, with all the tradition, with all the flexibility, the, the rubato playing, that means so that you, you are not allowed to play like it is written. You go forward, backwards, you do some things between, like a fish in the, in the water, so like this. You cannot um, imagine how difficult it is to have 16 first violin to think in the same way. And this I love so much. So, um, if it's good music, I love it. I don't know whether it's a good answer, but <laughs> at least it's one answer. <laughs> uh, yes, question over here. Maybe, should we get a mic over here? Oh, we, okay, yeah. sorry. Let's, uh, you'll be in the next question. Let's get that question over there, please. Could you tell us about the pitch of this orchestra and what you're accustomed to in Europe, or is it, what, what are your thoughts about The tuning of this orchestra, the way that they tune, as opposed to orchestras and it seems to me we're getting higher and higher in this country. Well, then, um, the orchestra is in a big row of tradition of, of all the orchestras of the world. They all got, get higher and higher. When I was a member of Vienna Philharmonic, uh, they made a test. Uh, there is a custom uh, that the, the musicians put their violins or their instruments in the break on the chair. They go in the cantina, drink some beer, and, and during this time, they made a secret test. And they found out it was some of the most difficult instrument, more than 448. Can you imagine? But they started to tune in 443. So it's a net, our ear gets a little bit used to have a higher pitch. And that's a little bit natural thing, because we, our ear starts to recognize a good intonation if it's a little bit higher. Therefore, the tendency within a performance is going up. But for me as a conductor, it has no sense to change that, as long as all of them going up. <laughs> if only a half is doing, then I have a problem. <laughs> Okay, uh, next question. Oh, uh, it was right here, but yeah, let's just have this question over here. Uh, speaking of the next season, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I also noticed there are some monsters program for some nights, uh, which means it's a great experience for audience, but could be very challenging mentally and physically. Actually, I found mostly will be on the yoga baton. For example, some night we'll have the Tchaikovsky pairing with uh, Mahler or uh, Bruckner Symphony Number no. 7 with Beethoven. I'm just wondering whether these programs are naturally designed or based on your preference or choice? Well, um, there was before a question about a sound. And I think I, I would like to have in the first season pieces which have a certain tradition in a sound. And you will agree that Bruckner and then Mahler needs a special sound. 
And Mozart needs a special sound. Beethoven needs a special sound. And all those composers you find in the first season. And that's my first reason to get really this special speciality in, in the sound. And I want to make some, uh, one small remark on Mahler. Mahler is for me really very important. Because I think in nowadays that a lot of, we expect the Mahler year 2010 and 2011. And um, I regard Mahler as a very, very Viennese composer. There are so many secrets in the music. For example, there is a lot of waltzes in it, menuets, scherzi, or the way they, you have to know the stories behind, of course, in every place, because every has some pro pro programmatic ideas. But I just want to pick out the waltz. When you play the waltz, you play never play one ta ta don ta ta don ta ta don ta. You always play one ta ta don pi ta don pi. Understand? It's only a small thing. And there are hundred thousands of these things where I think is a tradition, and I want to present you this tradition. This where Mahler was born in. Of course, he was in, born in Kalishti in the, um, in, in Czech, Czechoslovakia. But he's, um, well, um, Austria was quite big in that time. Now it's very small. It belonged to Austria at that time. But he was um, actually integrated in, the, in this tradition. He knew exactly what he composed. And this you have to know. And you probably will hear a little bit this kind of Viennese attach. And I want to know this and to get to know and present this kind of um, traditional Mahler. Because I like, I don't like, actually, myself, if, if you conduct a piece or to present a piece, just um, let's go together, and it, that's the most important. I think you pay for that, what you're coming here. And I think that's not enough. You must feel what's really in the background. And that's, I think that's the, my most, most, um, I'm quite ambitious in that. Might be in 10 years, I forget everything, but in this time I really would like to present it to you. You have the right to do it, to, to get it. <laughs>